When Cooper was just a Hollywood actor, he listened in on a meeting between his wife Barb, her fellow vault tech exec Bud Assens, and America's richest corp operations. Barb reveals that vault tech plans to start a nuclear war, guaranteeing the market value of the company's over 100 vaults scattered across the country, leaving its global competitors literally in the dust. Notably, while the games Fallout 2 and Fallout 4 blame China for starting the Great War, this series has a similar explanation for the bombs, as in the original Fallout game. It's great to see the big premise coming home to corporate America, with vault Tech having built the vaults in the first place. It makes sense that they also created the demand for their products. It's a good synergy. While the video games have always been secretive about the vaults, the show lays it all on the table. Apart from vault Tech itself dropping the bombs, the finale also reveals that every single vault is a private experiment controlled by a corporate entity, one of the many that conspired with vault Tech to burn the world. As Lucy's brother Norm finds out in Episode 8, Vault 31 contains cryogenically frozen Vault Tech execs, a storage unit for the slate overseers of Vault 32 and 33. Norm gets trapped in Vault 33 by Bud Assens, who's still working for Vault Tech, but has a cyborg brain on wheels. Most importantly, Vault 33, the home vault of Hank, Lucy, and Norm, is Vault Tech's model society meant to take back the wasteland and establish a proprietary civilization sometime in the future. Vault 32 had the same exact purpose, but its citizens were murdered by raiders who used the Pip-Boy of Lucy's mother, Rose, to unlock the main vault. As those who played the games know all too well, behind nearly every vault door is a depraved story of greed, hubris, or atrocity, and Vault Tech lays the groundwork for all three in the main vaults of the Fallout series. As revealed by Moldaver to Lucy, her father Hank was one of the pre-war Vault Tech employees who conspired to start a nuclear war in exchange for a place in Vault 31 as a future overseer. And this wasn't even the worst thing that the former Vault 33 overseer is responsible for. In the finale, Moldaver further explains that Lucy's mother, Rose, had no idea that Hank was over 200 years old. Hank fooled his entire family into believing that he too was born in a vault. When Rose wanted to see how society was doing on the surface, she defied Hank's wishes to stay inside, leaving and taking the kids with her to Shady Sands. In the games, Shady Sands was the largest settlement and capital of the new California Republic. When Hank found Rose there, she refused to go back. As Shady Sands threatened vault Tech's vision for a proprietary post-apocalyptic society, Hank took the kids back and bombed Shady Sands to the ground, with Rose caught in just the right radius of the blast. She became a long-lived feral ghoul in the care of Moldaver. Before that, Rose and Moldaver shared a hopeful vision for Shady Sands. The Flame Mother wasn't exactly the villain she was foreshadowed to be. Well, DAV was part of a team that developed cold fusion, limitless clean energy, but the technology was bought by Vault Tech to keep it dormant. Lucy had to convince Hank to give up the code to activate M's cold fusion reactor, which was the key to re-establishing the NCR. With Lucy also bringing Will Zig's head, containing the last crucial part of the system, Moldaver finally turned the reactor on, beginning an era of limitless clean energy and water to their massive Los Angeles settlement. However, Season 1 didn't exactly have a happy ending, as the Brotherhood's vertebrates move in to seize the cold fusion reactor. It's revealed that the Griffith Laboratory in L.A. was actually the headquarters of the new California Republic, and that Moldaver is one of its leaders and sternest defenders. Although Moldaver succumbs to her wounds in the ensuing gunfight, she dies a true revolutionary, even living just long enough to see her true goal realized. Yet with the Brotherhood of Steel invading the NCR and taking control of the cold fusion reactor, the future of both L.A. and the remnants of the NCR remains to be seen. This is the final paying due tribute to the ending of every Fallout game, where the epilogue reveals what happens to the settlements and factions after the game's events. On one hand, many among the Brotherhood would jump at the chance to abuse the possibilities of cold fusion. On the other hand, with Maximus inadvertently getting credit for Moldaver's death, the reborn hero knight Maximus may just steer things in the right direction.
Having borne witness to the horrors of the wasteland, and now seemingly having no choice but to stay in the Brotherhood, Maximus may just rise to his true potential as a just and merciful leader in Fallout Season 2. That may just be wishful thinking, but crazier things have happened in the wasteland. On that note, a faction of the Brotherhood could also use Cold Fusion to transform into new versions of the Enclave, vault Tech's most dangerous competitor in the games. But if that happens, Maximus could just hijack a suit of power armor and stick to his original plan. And this brings us to the most exciting setup for the show's return to Prime video. Lucy is not the only one with a score to settle with her father Hank, the real villain of the show. After the ghoul, Cooper expertly dispatches several Brotherhood paladins. He arrives to question Hank at gunpoint, asking where to find his long-lost family. But Hank escapes using his power armor jets, only for Cooper to reveal to Lucy that they actually have a shared goal now. I've waited over 200 years to ask somebody, where's my family? They now aim to find and get revenge on the vault tech executives behind all of this, which likely includes Cooper's ex-wife Barb. So, after finally putting her feral ghoul mother to rest, Lucy joins Cooper and Dogmeat to track Hank. In the very last scenes of the Fallout Season 1 finale, Hank looks over the horizon to see his destination, New Vegas in 2296. Notably, the runaway hit spin-off video game Fallout. New Vegas is set in the year 2281, a full 15 years prior to the events of the series adaptation. With Fallout Season 2 picking things up in 2296 or 2297, the show bears a huge responsibility for the future of the Fallout IP. Fallout. New Vegas may just be the most beloved game in the series, and its multiple possible endings have long divided fans about what canonically happened to the town. Fallout 4 steered clear of this controversy by barely referencing New Vegas, and now it falls on the series to paint the whole picture. Based on the endings of Fallout, New Vegas, there are several possibilities for what viewers can expect in Season 2. The New California Republic could have taken control of Hoover Dam, eventually annexing New Vegas and all other settlements in the Mojave Wasteland, driving out extremist groups like the Legion and the Followers of the Apocalypse, a new era of prosperity and taxation. However, if Mr. House wins the endgame, the NCR relinquishes control of Hoover Dam to the free economic zone of New Vegas, described by the narrator as a despotic vision of pre-war glory. Though New Vegas prospers in this ending, crazed Nike and mutants and raiders still terrorize the wasteland. Yet even that seems better than if Fallout. New Vegas ended in favor of the Legion, which either exterminates or integrates all other tribes and factions in the Mojave, ruled by the cruel and iron-fisted Caesar, who leaves New Vegas in ruins. Based on how New Vegas looks in the ending of Fallout Season 1, this seems like the most likely scenario. At the same time, it's impossible to tell why New Vegas seems to have had much better days. That said, based on what Cooper said to Lucy, Hank is likely headed to meet his superiors at Vault Tech there, and the three are bound to see each other again in New Vegas. Apart from Mr. House, it's possible that Cooper's wife Barb is still alive, ready to debrief Hank about the future of Vault 33. So, that's everything you need to know before Fallout Season 2 drops in 2025 or 2026. Thank you for watching Movie Recap Pro, and stay tuned for more streaming news.